Well, now let's turn to Steve Sherrill. Steve, what do you want to talk about? Tonight, we're, we're going to talk about what would we do, what we would do differently if we were going to redo our layout. Now, will we make it bigger? Will we make it smaller? Will we make it a shop layout? Will we make it a big square? Would we um, make it higher, lower? And in my segment, I always like to call on some of the modelers who um, are on the Zoom live. So if I call you and ask you to participate and probably answer some of those questions, um, it gives us a chance to better know you and to know your layout. So tonight, um, what, what I would do differently is everybody knows I have a separate building. Well, when I moved into the building, it had a bathroom in it, and I took the bathroom out. Big, big, big mistake. And so, so I would definitely do that, change that. I, I um, also had a duck under. Um, definitely not, don't do that for me. Um, and uh, the layout is just too big. Well, right now, you know, I would have cut by 20 feet off of it, uh, running length, and uh, made it much smaller. Because uh, over the years, you know, you, when you start out with, with an operating type scheme, you get a lot of people coming over. But as those people pass away or their, their ideas change and they want to do something else, uh, you maybe you're down to just one or two people. So you end up with a big layout that you can't run by yourself. So this is some of the problems that I've run into. So um, if, if I were to ask that same questions to somebody like um, uh, Burr Stewart, for instance. Burr, are you there? Burr? Okay. I see in the background of your layout, you, you have a two-level layout. Yeah. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, the yeah, I have a two or three layout level layout that's he's got two main lines that are each wandering around the room, so it's like three or four hundred feet of my main line. Um, and I, I have a couple answers to this. One, one is, um, uh, right off the bat, I would have uh waited to start my layout until I had some experience with operating sessions at other people's layouts. Because the big thing you run into is you design what you think is an ideal layout, and then you had someone else come over to play with you, and you realize you made a bunch of mistakes. Um, and that, I wish I had waited to start. The other thing, of course, about waiting to start is the the stuff that's available to us keeps getting better and better and better. Yeah. And you know, I just noticed the other day a, a product from DCC Concepts that's like a, I can't remember what they call it, like a super panel or something, which is even better than the mini panel that NCE has been providing for years for setting up push buttons and everything. Um, and there was something else I was going to say I would do over. Um, Burr, Burr, oh, are you... Oh. Are you sorry? Let me let me say one other thing. Of course, this has been uh, said a hundred thousand times, but uh, it's true. I would have, uh, if I could do it again, I would have made at least twice twice as many staging yard tracks. Hmm. And we just saw a layout uh, tonight where the guy had nothing but rolling stock on all the walls. Yeah. No, and those weren't even in staging tracks. So my my problem with storing rolling stock now is really difficult, and I I've got all these boxes from buying the uh, equipment in the attic, but I you know getting up to the attic and getting those boxes out is a nightmare. So um, I guess I would, if I was starting over again now, I would pay more attention to how am I going to store all this stuff if it's not on the layout. Because, now, you know, that's uh, that's infrastructure that you just don't think about that kind of infrastructure. You just think about, I want to get track, I want to run trains and build scenery, buildings, and get it going with it. You don't think, well, this is a long-term um, equipment management uh, inventory control kind of hobby. And you have to figure out what you have, where it is, where the box for it is, and how to make shelves or 
closets or whatever that you can store all that stuff in. Now, what scale are you? Uh, well, I'm <laughs> I'm in HO mainly, but I have a perfectly nice four by eight foot end scale layout in the living room that my wife won't let me get rid of because <laughs> we we built it together before we had children, and. I, you know, it's it's still an excellent layout, and we love running N-scale trains on that. So then, mm -hmm. there again, I have a bunch of N-scale equipment and boxes. At least an N-scale doesn't take your whole attic to store the boxes. <laughs> and I I have yeah. some I have some O-scale equipment that I would love to play with too. Um, just enough, uh, uh, you know, Atlas switches and stuff to make a sw shelf layout, but I haven't really gotten around to that but boy those o scale boxes are even bigger than the ho ones of course of course they're much yeah. bigger so now is there any way that you could turn your camera around that we could get a little better look at your layout oh sure i mean yeah you can also you can also go to my um uh youtube channel and see lots and lots and lots as everyone knows you can see lots of my videos <laughs> I always like to see layouts when you're, you know, away from them a little bit. You get a little better idea of see, how big they are. What, are, you how this, are, you how this, are you seeing this? Are you seeing it? Let me le level it up. I'm going to figure out. You're, you're seeing this on the side here. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. I see you've got all those tools already, huh? Yeah, to uh, turn on the lights. Is that, I, that, that's yeah. okay, Bird. This is at the spur of the moment. I uh, appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I just want to get the lights on. Okay. So, so uh, what, what got me going was the Air Bay Yard in Seattle. And this, this is the model of the Air Bay Yard. Wow. And I originally had this yard, which is about 20 feet long in a different house. And then when we moved here, I was able to take it apart and move it here. So uh, my big joke is that this, this ladder on the other end of the yard, if you've ever been to Seattle, this is the Davis Street overpass, which is the best rail fanning spot in the city. <laughs> and there's a car repair shed right next to it. But this yeah. ladder right here, see this wow. ladder? See, see the ladder here? Yeah. And all these cars? So uh, we've been switching cars in and out of this uh, since 1985. And and that's tw 15 years longer than the Burlington Northern even existed. <laughs> wow, well, that, that's fantastic looking. That's huge. What size? How big is the layout? What's your room? What's, what's your room size? What's that? What's your room size? That's what I say. It's, that's the room size is twenty four by thirty with a couple of little tiny additions. I'm going to stop because okay. you don't have time for this. You've always got a tight <laughs> schedule on the <this> show. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm, I'm going to ask one more person. Rich Randall, are you there? Rich, I see you. Yes. yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, I know Rich models the Milwaukee Road. Now, Rich, was that your first choice to model? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. I was um, uh, in the group here in, um, you know, in Northern Virginia, and basically like Pennsylvania Railroad. I I always liked electric railroad, so Pennsylvania was was fine with the electrified. You know, GG ones and all that stuff. That's what I was going to model until I discovered the Milwaukee Road. Mm -hmm. now, and, then, and then the 600 miles of freight railroad going through the mountains was mind blowing to me. I felt like I really liked that. Now, some of your layout is electrified, right? Well, it has catenary. Um, it's just scenery. <laughs> just scenery right now? Okay. Yeah, I mean, there are technical difficulties in um, electrifying the catenary. Now, if you if you were to do something different um, to, to improve your layout, would you make it bigger, smaller? Um, 
what, what would you do? I, I know that you, some of your areas, you, you, you have a problem, a reach problem. Um, you know, would you change that type of setup or would you, you know, how would you improve it? Your layout well, is possible. It's, it's funny you would uh, bring this up. Some time ago, I made a list of all my mistakes, the big mistakes. So you, I could go through that if you like. It's got probably eight different things on it. Well, give us the first three because they're the, probably the ones that hurt the most. Well, I I failed to use a computer program to design a layout. I felt like it was um, going to take me too long to learn the program, and I wanted to get started building. But what I should have done is waited and uh, and designed it with a computer program. This way you can you can reveal all of your your design issues um, you know electronically where where a crossover is not going to fit because you know you don't have enough clearance or your grades too steep and you you don't have enough um, or, uh, vertical curvature built in. I just think a computer design is is the way to go to avoid mistakes. So that's number one. Not enough well, staging. Has uh -oh. anybody said that before? <laughs> no. No. But would, would you make it smaller? What would you do? No, I, I like the size. Layouts? I like the size even though Fair I don't have enough up. years left to finish. I know you, you run full length passenger car, Milwaukee uh railroad passenger cars, you got beautiful trains. Um did, did that affect your design any? Because you have well, to have it, real broad curves to make it look yes, right. I, yeah, it, it certainly did affect yeah, how broad a curves I need, what you would call a a minimum radius, which is about sixty six inches. Yeah, to, uh, to fit some now, of the big, bigger equipment. Yeah, yeah. No, Richard's O scale he does have some O N thirty, so you know, um, he, your layout is how big? You got a whole basement full. I know that. It's forty five by um, about thirty five. Oh wow, wow. I, I I did try to fill it up as best I could. <laughs> Wow. It, you know, it, it runs, it runs believe from, me. Sorry. He's got a lot of nice nice trains down there. I'll tell you he's he, he's really something. He, I you um know. The, the lowest level um staging yard is at about let's see, I guess about twenty twenty six inches off the floor. And then there are levels that go all the way to the ceiling. Yeah. Hmm. I, I wanted to model the Milwaukee in the in the mountains, so so at Avery Yard, trains heading east go up into the ceiling, simulating going up the Bitterroot Mountains, the Rockies, and going west, it, it stays pretty much flat. Yeah. Heading, yeah. Okay. Well, let me go to Jeff Jordan. Thank you, Rich. I appreciate. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Jeff. How about you? You're kind of in the uh, a building stage. You've got your layout designed. Um, have you changed anything from your original plan? Uh, I have started to think about uh, some changes. The principal one right now that I'm thinking about is figuring out some way to get some more track. Um, that I'm thinking about building a branch off of the railroad, a logging branch, that would be mostly a shelf layer, uh, a shelf addition that I have some wall space where I could add a shelf and then we could branch off of the main line. I'm kind of inspired again by my recent trip and, and got some materials that showed on the Rio Grande Southern that there were a number of branch operations, particularly logging railroads, uh, running Shea locomotives, bringing, uh, cut lumber or logs down to the Rio Grande Southern. So I, I really want to add that. Uh, I'm kind of constrained by space. 
So I can't add a lot, but but the ability to run along the wall, uh, uh, and and I have a Bachman Shea sitting around doing nothing, and so I thought it would be fun to make that a branch operation. Uh, the, as you noted, this this is a fairly new layout. I started over when 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 I retired and moved from my old home, uh, and so I haven't been building that long. And I made a number of conscious decisions when I started the new layout. Um, for example, my old layout was two levels, had grades and so forth. This one, I consciously decided it was a single level and no grades, and especially after I spoke to a custom layout builder who said that he advocates having the scenery go up and down, but the tracks stay level. And, and so <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. Uh, and and facilitates operation and avoids uh, the unrealistic grades. So so I I designed it with that. I designed it with the maximum radius curves that would fit in the space available. Uh, and so also I'm happy with that. Um, building an ON30, the, you run out of real estate quickly. Uh, because of the size of the structures. And as I guess you all know from having watched this program, I build a lot of structures uh, and I'm running out of room to put structures in. So I'm actually reevaluating what's on the layout right now and possibly upgrading and replacing some of the structures. Uh, some of the structures that originally were on the layout are generic uh, uh, they don't particularly match anything in my prototype. And so I've been a little bit more prototype focused, looking a little bit more at getting more prototypical structures and possibly scratch building some more structures. What radius did you stay with? What's your maximum? Uh, uh, well, what I did, and I, I, I did this the old fashioned way. I literally laid out brown paper on the floor in the space available, and then used a radius rod and swung arcs on the paper. And it worked out at about 21 and a half inches is the radius, which works fine for the Bachman stuff because the Bachman equipment runs all the way down to 18 inches or less. I test mm -hmm. ran everything to make sure everything I had would would get around the, the the curves, and it does just fine. Everything gets around nicely. And again, modeling narrow gauge, tight curves are okay. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. All right. We take so one more. That part. was my philosophy. That was the other big philosophy change in changing layouts. My old layout filled half the basement was modeled on the Lehigh Valley Railroad near Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And oh. you try and run pretty large trains, but eh, until you get a huge layout, you know, you're running 15 cars is a big train. And uh, of course, the Lehigh Valley in, in its heyday was running much longer trains. On the other hand, there are plenty of photographs of the Rio Grande Southern running three and four car trains. And so I can run a prototypical train uh, you know, small steam locomotive, a couple of cars and a caboose, uh, and it looks just fine. Now, I realize that at times they ran longer trains as well. But but uh, the, the, the editorial that appeared in Model Railroader, God, many, many, many years ago, encouraged people to think about narrow gauge because of their limited space and that you could have a much more prototypical looking train if you had limited space if you modeled narrow gauge. Yeah, and you don't really need as much equipment either. Well, but that's the, the 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 disease of all of us model railroaders is that we collect more equipment than we need or can fit. Well, the that answer is the other is... thing. That is the other thing I did include in this layout is I do have three tracks of staging, so I can park three trains off the layout. Yeah, yeah. Well. Alan Rogers, can you uh, add a little something on this about your railroad? Uh, well, <laughs> I'll tell you. I've got to tell you a little secret here, which is going to scandalize a lot of people. But my <laughs> my main thing is 
uh, building structures. And that's why I started the company that I have. And I have a train layout because I sort of have to, to hang out with you guys. <laughs> but uh, I have an ON30 layout. Let me go ahead and uh, see if I can sort of give you an aerial view here. Let me just unplug my computer. So uh, I don't know how well you can see all that, but it's it's not really much to write home about after what I've seen this evening. Huh. But that's my ON30 layout. That's me. So uh, yeah. I have to say my cloudscape turned out better than I expected because clouds can be very tricky. But I, I used an airbrush and I layered the clouds on. So I looked at the sky one day when there were clouds and I thought, well, there's not just one layer of clouds. There's several layers that cover up each other. Yeah. And I, I kind of added in some dark clouds so it looks like it wants to rain a little bit. And they turned out really well this time. And yeah. I tried to paint clouds with a brush for years based on a technique I saw online one time. And my clouds just never turned out with a brush. But with an airbrush, they did, they came out pretty well. So that's really that's all nice. I have to tell you about my layout. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that. You know, hey, nothing wrong with that. You you enjoy sitting down there probably with possibly a an adult beverage and watching the train run around, that's fine. That's that's what it's all about. Um you know. Oh. Well uh, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a commercial plug. Uh <laughs> I don't belong to AA, but I, I have over ten years sobriety. So <laughs> the most adult beverage that I drink is mineral water. So there you go. There you are. That's good. That's good. But thanks for sharing. Thank um, you so much. Well, you know, I want everybody to have an opportunity to join in on on this segment. Um, and every week or every time I get the privilege of being on here, um, I want to include as many people as I can. I think the, a problem that we have is we don't know each other. You know, all I see is a name and a picture. I don't know you. And I, I don't mean you, Alan. I'm talking about everybody whose picture I see and it, it's a real problem until you go to a train show a train meet you meet him and you get to talk and I think everybody on here wants to share their, their layout they're all proud of what they've done if it's a four by eight or a 40 by 80 you know we've all done the best we can and uh, we're willing to share it we make mistakes we learn from others and that's what this is all about so with that, I'll end the segment and back to you, Jim. Thanks for everybody who shared. Well, listen, I, you know, the the, uh, the three, four people that you uh, had show their layouts tonight. Well, I tell you, I wish they'd take a couple of pictures and uh, maybe write a sentence or two and send them to Mark. Because I, I tell you, the the, uh, the four layouts that you showed, I think that's gorgeous work. That really is. And it's obvious that people are spending an awful lot of time and effort thinking about what they're building and what they want their model railroad to be. And if we can share that with other modelers and, and frankly share uh, the com some of the comments that you made uh, of what you might do uh, or think about now that you've built it and operated it for a while, what, what, uh, what main decision you might have changed on the front end. I think it's an excellent question, uh, but I really do appreciate everybody that uh, uh, that, that talked to Steve tonight. And and by the way, Steve, I, I understand that you've got a lifetime award. Oh, yeah. Well, what yeah. do you mean? Oh, what do you mean? Totally. Oh, yeah. totally. I mean, talk about getting to know people. Tell us about your lifetime award. Well, next Stand week, I'll, uh, I'll show sit, you. Sit up, sit up straight now so that we know <laughs> that you're scared. <laughs> I'll feature a video next week of him getting his award. No, come on. I, I'm 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 embarrassed. You know, I just try to always share what what I've learned, and uh, it's been a real pleasure. You know, for seventy years or so, talking model railroads, talking real trains. Um, you know, started out when I was five years old with an American Flyer, and then when I was ten, my dad gave me a gift of a hundred dollars that I could spend. And of course, you know where that went for trains, right? Mm -hmm. 
well, there's a whole lot of history after that. I mean, I've made every mistake you can make with trains from in 1952 that you could possibly make, you know. <laughs> I mean, I didn't realize you had to cut those rails once you bent that track. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I tried to do with pliers and all. I mean, it just, you would just, yeah, every mistake you make as a kid, you know, but you enjoyed it. Um, and you'd go to the sales when Athern had a sale every year for 99 cents, you could get a car. And so you, you know, cut lawns and you get five or seven dollars and you go down and get five or seven cars, engines with four dollars and 95 cents and rubber band drive. Um, you know, we went through, I, I was lucky enough to be every time that. Uh, a new period of modeling came, I was there ready to make the change, you know? And uh, so I was, uh, I just kind of stuck with it. Always had a layout, always had a layout of some kind. My, my daughter, my sister was an artist and she used to paint the backdrops. You know, she was very talented. Um, I've got a picture somewhere of, of my, my little sister and my younger brother at the train layout that I had made at that time, I always used natural products, um, you know, uh, lots of dirt, uh, vermiculite, things like this, you know. Um, I, I was just willing to try it. I mean, it looked good. My next door neighbor was an HO model railroader, um, but he didn't have a train that ran. I had a train that ran and he had the scenery. So we would just go next door to that. So, from there, it just kept on going. But the, the award I got was so surprised, you know, I didn't even know I was on this. You know, this organization that gave was Owen 30 Model Railroaders. And uh, it, it, it's very appreciative. I, you know, you just don't realize what people think of you, um, how they appreciate you. And I just, until you get something like this, you know, that award, but I just, I'm just me, you know, I just love trains, love model railroading. And so sometimes I even get on Tom Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk yeah. tomorrow for that. <laughs> you know, know that you, you never have corrected your spelling though. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I've changed a little bit on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so, I mean, something like right today or during this time period, you know, the fact that we can communicate with people in Australia, all we have to do is get the right time of the day. We can talk to Australian modelers and get their idea of what they're doing. And, uh, you know, with Ian, uh, Ron Hutchison, these guys, they're fantastic modelers and they have a whole different approach to things. Um, I just think that today's just a wonderful time to be at model railroading, other than the actual expense, which some of the stuff is outrageously expensive. But one thing I have noticed, and I saw this the other day, Lego model railroading is really getting popular, and they're starting to design things that look just like scale models. They're 128 scale. I mean, they're doing a K27. They're doing Heislers. They're doing um, Amtrak looking locomotives. And, and these are all, you know, three, three or 4,000 pieces. Um, their buildings look like they're, you know, uh, are just like craftsman buildings that we had today. Uh, all, we, all they need is the actual figures, the scale figures, and they would look fantastic on a railroad. So we're, we're heading into that, you know, and the good thing about that is they appeal to the seven to 12 year olds who are our next generation model railroaders. They will be going from Legos to real scale. We hope they'll certainly be getting introduced to that. But uh, the parents who are letting these kids use these Legos is just a way to, you know, enhance model railroading in the future. That's a good, good, good idea. Tom knows all about that, right, Tom? Yep. 
Got two grandkids. I'm gearing them up with the Legos. Are they scratch builders? <laughs> They're two years old and four <laughs> years old. But when he's seven, I'll get him going. <laughs> So, Steve, thank you so much for tonight. We'll see you next time. We really appreciate everything that you've done for the hobby and are doing for the hobby. And well, uh, not just getting the award, but having a modeler like uh, Al Judy present it to you must have been just really special for you. And we're so happy for you. I tell you what, I was so, I had no idea. You know, Alan Littlefield got the first one. Yeah. And, you know, he's an excellent modeler. He's really out there with his models and stuff like that. And um, I'm not near the model modelers these guys are, but I do share my hobby, you know, and uh, talk about it and have my layout open anytime anybody wants to come and see it. We'll run it. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much, Steve. Okay. Thank you, Jim.